I'm uh, Anne Katrine and I'm a PhD student in, at University of York and at University of Copenhagen. So I'm part of the ArcSci 2020 PhD network and we are a network of 15 PhD students that all work on archaeological science and we've been meeting for the past three and a half years to develop our skills and develop our network. My project is about investigating the diet of uh, dogs in the past. So I'm studying really old dog poop, uh, which is called uh, either copolites or paleofeces. And we can uh, learn something about what the dogs ate from this uh, and also about the bacteria in their intestinal system. And uh, if we're lucky, we can also learn about parasites. So what we do at first is that we take a coprolite and then we sample it by removing the surface and then only taking the center uh, because that is the part that has been least in contact with the environment. And then we bring it into our clean laboratory where we wear um, whole body suits, hair nets, face masks, gloves to avoid contaminating the samples with our own DNA because these materials are, are very sensitive to modern contamination. And then we do various extraction methods to pull the DNA that are in these samples uh, out of them. And then we take them to another lab and multiply this DNA uh, thousands of times. When we uh, get the data back from, uh, from sequencing is when we begin to actually uh, get results from this. We try to figure out the various species that are in the sample, um, so what the dogs would have eaten if they've eaten fish or birds or deer maybe, or if they have like E. coli bacteria in their stomachs or something like lactobacillus if they're puppies and have been drinking milk, or maybe they have like some kind of intestinal worms and you can also get the DNA out of those and, and identify them. The ability to obtain information that we know it's been ingested and through, uh, come through the digestive system is really important to understand the, the life ways and subsistence practices of people in the past. And because food is such a big part of any living organism's life, uh, it's, it's really one of the most fundamental things that we can study. I've looked at some coprolites from northern Siberia and in these ones I've uh, I found that the, these dogs have eaten polar bear, among other things, uh, possibly some fish and maybe some bird, uh, although I can't say exactly which bird species it would have been at this time. The interesting thing about these dogs is uh, that they're from a 9,000 years old site. So they re lived a really long time ago and they are hypothesized at this time already, split into breeds, uh, which is quite early in the history of dogs. They were only domesticated maybe 15,000 years ago. Um, so to have breeds at this time is really interesting. So. What we want to know is, because diet was also a big part of the domestication of dogs, uh, we know over time that they've evolved to be able to eat and digest a more human-like diet. And so the interesting part is to sort of see if they already at this early stage in their evolution could eat human-like food and if the people would have eaten the same things. I love what I do because I've always enjoyed nature and biology and to be able to apply molecular biology to archaeological materials is just amazing, honestly. <laughs> uh, to, to be able to use these techniques to look into the past and obtain uh, information that is not available through any other methods. And then the things that you can find out, like to imagine that you can see what a dog, in my case, ate like 9,000 years ago is just incredible. Something that really also gives us insight into how life was. And I think it's so fascinating.